Cool. Uh, uh, one thing to mention about um, kind of our, our workflow for release is we try to do per LTS release time, so from node 8 and 10, about one release a month. Um, and at the moment, there's three of us doing the LTS releases, my to myself and Shelley. So that's one kind of quarter, which is actually no yeah. Um I'm not sure Miles is going to continue to be able to do that, so obviously getting more people on, they can share it out a bit more. And the current release schedule kind of varies between one per week or one per week. Um, may take a little bit less effort than the LTS releases sometimes because there's less auditing, um, but you will hit conflict, so depending on what conflict you hit, it could take up a bit more time. Um, so there's plenty of releases for me. With the current release, we are at the moment trying to reduce the number of conflicts by putting Zebra Major here, which means that we, as soon as the Zebra Major lands, we have a look at it, and then we open the back report with the Zebra patch. So we do a, a specific patch to backport everything that is not a breaking change from the Zebra Major and to then line the original PR with them on top. And then we have be an argument for while reviewing some of the major PRs to ask people to make them as narrow as possible and to check any other changes and throw them another PR. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter anymore too much. Like well, as, as long as we do that, it's fine. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, I, I, I would actually say it's more of a case where we care less about that than before. Mm -hmm. Because we do backport everything now. The release team back for us. Mm -hmm. you know, whoever did the car or right. the release team, whoever, pretty much like in this case, we just have to make sure it's backward. Okay. Um, some PRs, uh, we can directly say, okay, this is making sense because the breaking change itself is like everything it does is breaking. But most PRs can normally do like, okay, you switch uh, like this part, and then the rest of the code still stays the same, but um, and the breaking change is gone. And then you have less confidence. Um, because in the beginning, when we have a new release line in major, it's easy going. It's like everything lands like cool. The more releases you do, the more conflicts you hit. One of the parts to always prevent is landing PRs out of order. PRs out of order make the worst conflict. There's some background like the, the 10 to X difference between 10 to x and 12 to x that's currently probably over two and a half thousand minutes mm -hmm. that we notice manually all get in code code and put in but when we hit back or when we hit commit conflicts we have a label saying that we request it and then we all get out of sync which causes more conflicts mm -hmm. and we're kind of in a state where we just can't catch up yep. so now we're at a point of 10 to x where we can only pull in really changes people either ask for or like cleanly Mm -hmm. Or we request a swipe back for because the, the branches have diverged far too much. So, what Ruben's trying to do is make that easier going forwards, but we will have that problem with the template X yeah. forever. So yeah, yeah, in, 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 yeah. There's no way that we can fix that. <laughs> That's over. But what we can do is like ongoing, yeah. that from uh, the 12th uh, release on, it will become easier. Also, for the maintenance. Long term support. So I just have Zoom open and I'm not actually doing anything because nobody else is on there. But that's what I'm, I'm just monitoring the chat and stuff like that. Is that all I'm supposed to be doing? Okay. <laughs> um, so the first bit um, we came onto this conversation was about onboarding new releases. We have a couple of volunteers. I can take an action to make you train formula, formalizing the process about setting up shadowing and things. So I found that really useful. Um, previously, people have started by building current releases before they come to LTS. Um, do people think that's a good idea, or is the same a similar process for each? The learning curve for LTS is a little bit more difficult. And the benefit, I'm not sure how to apply it. Yeah, I don't think we have enough context. Sorry. Okay. Oh yeah, that's, that's exactly, exactly it, though. So I would. I don't have enough context to choose either. So if you think one is better than the other, I would say both is fine. Out of my perspective. 
And it's really good to make this book about this. One of the key things where we discussed that this is still requiring a lot. I think it's still a formal requirement, but we decided that we would be more to have that and that we should remove that formal requirement. Oh, yes, to do a preparing proper food. Yes. Just in terms of stability, I think it was introduced, having to get your yes. GCG keys. And, and, and also right. that you probably know what, what is going on, like that we're inferring that it's not as bad that uh, no release would break. Um, yeah. Like at the moment, the whole process is super, super manual. Yep, you I know. Can, you can break everything all the time, and you always make mistakes when you just forget one step, and it's a lot of steps. <laughs> it's like it's 23 or something. It's 19 or 23. Yeah, it's, it's everything is manual. Everything is you can forget something and ugh. The question is: Is there a checklist for that? Yes. yes. Okay. That's how you got the yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I got it. Yeah, it's it's very long winded. Um, we've discussed it the last probably two or three classes, and it's about building some automation yeah. to help us out. But we've been so we may be actually just keeping the roots releases mm -hmm. challenging out that we haven't actually got to the point where we can sit and yeah. that's that's one of the things that I'd like to do eventually is like once I've done this a bit then I can get to that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking that there might be a way we can work with joins to give no man to extend that to show these things across into the branches that we need. Yeah. So what, uh, especially I feel like I should half be here and half not be here. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you're in the doorway? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, we can even discuss this. So, we should definitely make sure that we have like a PDQ where you automatically amend the PR as a common and staging branch and, and run the testing automatically. Mm -hmm. And as soon as there's a conflict, the pipe has to stop and say, this is conflicting. And they may not land any other PI in the meanwhile mm -hmm. until this conflict is resolved. Why? Because one of the worst things is backporting this whole from the other project of the PI. Mm -hmm. If you do that, you create worse conflicts because sometimes, and let's say that the, the following up PR actually lands cleanly, but it changed something internally and now the tests all the mm -hmm. So you actually have to then uh, bisect the actual problem. And um, like for one uh, current release, I think I bisected eight commits. <laughs> and if there's only if there's only one correct order in which the commits can land, that, that helps with automation, yes. obviously. So. We do have a like so we build a tool to detect uh, which uh, commits should land in which order. But especially since we now land the Zenver Matrix PRs as well in between, mm -hmm. this is even less conflicting because yeah. now we have like a, almost always the correct order. Well, I mean, don't you have a, literally a increasing or an incrementing log of P, the PR numbers? Like, can't you just go by that? Or no, 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 not at all. We land mm -hmm. PR is completely out of order. Yeah. yeah, PR number orders when it was open, but like some PRs land right away, others take weeks, um, so it's in years. <laughs> <laughs> right, but even if like anyone that takes weeks, wouldn't the ones in the future still be? No. No, okay, I could rest. You absolutely are. <laughs> 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 okay. Sorry. Number is assigned when it open and yeah. assigned when you open. So I had to uh, rebase multiple times on last step because uh, I'm landing so, multiple PRs in a row. Yeah. And while doing that, um, it, everything was so green for all of them. Like mm -hmm. all the CIs passed. So you land a PR, now you land a second PR. Well, it turns out the first PR because the second, okay, the second, second PR. Well, it still lands cleanly, but the test is broken. So uh, Raphael is joining the Zoom chat, and I'm just going to let uh, let him know that there's it's a Pretty small group here. There's um, only two people from the release working group. That's Beth Griggs and Ruben Bridgewater, and then it's uh, me, Tierney, Walid, and Manil. Right? I got it all right. Right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. 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 So uh, you let's share it. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's the person that doesn't exist. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, take away that. Okay. <laughs> or Ruben or someone. <laughs> um, related to your back watching major 12 changes, a topic that's come up quite a few times is should we change the concept of what closed means for a PR? So when someone opens a major PR, it can be merged into master, we're not going to hold that up, but the actual PR we're going to get closed when the appropriate practical has been merged. So I'm against that. Yeah, so partially, you know, some people on the right PR is there, and they yeah. don't close it. And partially, we close them. And uh, yes, it is a bit. So so it's a real concept of the release loop because what we are working on is closed PRs, mm -hmm. not with open one. We don't land anything, so to speak, in that way. All closed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We use labels to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. You think the PR is the label? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, and their label with the version is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. No. Can you show us? <laughs> you show us an example. Also, just to clarify, when you say when you land a major PR, by major, you're defining a large PR, not a. No, no, no. Semper major. Change. A semper semper major. major. Yeah. Okay. Um, Raphael says he's having a little trouble hearing. He can hear, but he's having just a little bit of trouble. Is this? My Maybe it should just be. Yeah, that one, that would be. Oh yeah, this this looks like it would. Might be yeah. Yeah, the, the, the microphone. Yeah. All right. Have different labels. I, I think the level branch. Uh, and, and this is, um, I don't know exactly. Okay. No, I'm gonna, uh, yeah. So I can we see. have a filter by label here. We have backport requested. Mm -hmm. So, and this is actually, and this means there is a conflict in some way in this period that the releaser cannot resolve on its own immediately because. Sometimes there are like tiny uh, conflicts that I just resolve right away while lending the commit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, like if it's obvious, you know, yeah, it's yeah. Like, and then, then you can do it and you run the test and everything passes cool. Uh, yeah. um, but if it's not that way and it's conflicting, then you go into the PR and mark it as backport requested with the current uh, release uh -huh. that you're preparing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then a manual backport has to be open for it. Backport to 11 uh, or backport to version X, that means um, it was requested and it is now backported, uh -huh. which is a bit redundant because we don't normally use it. <laughs> <laughs> then we have don't land on version, mm -hmm. which means sometimes we say explicitly um, this should only be backported until a specific version, which could be important for, let's say, the age change. Um, because um, uh, some change might be uh, Zember minor, but it could be like a slowdown on old versions, but, but a performance improvement on new versions. So depending on the V8 version, as an example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then can we, we just command plus that. Like, mm -hmm. can we zoom Make in? it bigger? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know if that helps in GitHub. There you go. Gotcha. Oh, oh, gotcha. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Very nice. Oh, All right. Do you see it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. Oh, okay. Super. That's a lot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it responded to the. Yeah. I, just take that's cool. That's still. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm, so that's the don't land on. Um, that, that's always during the landing process already, normally. Sometimes uh, someone might come also later on and add that, but that's super rare. Not only we just don't have that. And then, and then we have the version, whatever version it is, and uh, we use it for open backport PRs. Mm -hmm. yeah. huh. so this is nodding along knowingly. God. <laughs> <laughs> Which means that uh, when you manually backport something, this label would be attached to it. Okay. You'll also often people put in the title as well, like. Um, brackets. Yes, uh, exactly. In, in the title, it's always yeah. good to do that. Um, uh, and like almost no collaborator knows how to use these labels. <laughs> this is something we should perhaps try to improve. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It kind of sounds like y'all are really overworked, and improving process is a nice to have, <laughs> including automation. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, yeah, because for example, one very typical mistake that people do is that they add a 
let's say uh, they want to have a PR backported on a specific release line, then they actively add the backport requested label. Now that does exactly the opposite of what they actually want. Right. <laughs> yeah. I think I think we need to clarify what all our labels mean and somewhere mm -hmm. in the docs. I think uh, renaming the label would be yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Both. I mean both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because well, those we've discovered on this product, naming labels is hard. I'm going to submit to you the author-ready label. But go ahead. Exactly. It was like multiple things where oh my god, what a discussion about it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's still not really not a lot of people use it. No. But yeah. it, anyway, it, it is. But, used but, more. But, yeah. Let's. Yeah. yeah let's, sorry. Topic, didn't, mean to, didn't, didn't, didn't mean to get us off topic. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's also um, if you ever are stuck for things to do, I'm not sure how well we've socialized it. You can search PRs and hit backcourt requested to 10.x, and you can actually you could try picking up one of those PRs, and then you basically open a diff and try to apply that diff to the 10.x release line. So normally, sometimes it's as simple as a few variables have had the names changed. Mm -hmm. You just need to reflect that change back on the old branch. Mm -hmm. It typically the owner of the original PR will do the backport for it because they're the most familiar but not everyone keeps up with it and there's some that have been around so, for years. So would backporting a forgotten unloved PR be a good first or second contribution for someone? Because my, my feeling has always been backports tend to require following a bunch more instructions about what, what branch to open it against and then, you know, how to resolve the, the, the the conflict that result in the backport being requested in the first place, but I also kind of wonder if having a bunch of instructions to follow is actually good for a first time person. So, that like that's much better than just being left to their own devices. <laughs> I, I think I, I think at some point I may have spoken to Michael saying it might actually be a good thing to to run a little session on and help submit backports mm. because you've got the code there, so you right. You don't necessarily need to write your own feature. You just need to know, work out how to apply that exact diff or that code change to the old release line, which can be quite a nice, intuitive way of starting to contribute to core. Okay, um, I I have someone so, who. Okay, yeah, so, I'm going to so suggest I to someone to we'll disagree on that. Okay, um, because it's actually often challenging to know, like uh, especially let, let's take ten and two alpha. When you backport some PRs, or like uh, you want to backport even to eight, the diff is so immense mm -hmm. that, uh, and then you have like, C, often the worst backport PRs are C++ code. Mm -hmm. So um, people have to be very knowledgeable about the actual code that was changed, and not only about the change itself, but also about the former implementation. And about whatever change is causing a conflict, yes. probably as well. And then uh, to know how to resolve that conflict, and not only the conflict, because sometimes the change might land, but then a code change in uh, another place, you yeah. change the logic so, that you have to identify why it is breaking, you right. have to uh, run. Yeah. So this is actually quite challenging, so especially for the request ones. Yeah, for the ones that have been sitting there. Because I was going to say, like, there are certainly backports where it's just like, Oh, it's just a white space diff that needs to be sorted yeah. out. You know, there, there, there are easy ones, absolutely, but those, absolutely. but those tend to just get done. Exactly, exactly <laughs> that. That's, you know, that's like I, like yeah. I okay. guess we normally do that while landing. Yeah, there. sometimes when you're you're up like preparing a release though, and you're like 200 commits in, yeah. and you can see like a load of white space changes or a, lots of written conflicts. I'll just add the back portrait label on because I think I, I cannot stay up another half an hour just to get this one commit banded when I've got a hundred more. Mm -hmm. But then you've got the issue where I'm now waiting for that commit to be backported or the order goes like it, it's a compromise. I'm either sacrificing the order in which it lands or I can't land any more commits. And when we're only doing uh, one minor per quarter mm -hmm. for an LTS release line, yeah. like we we can't wait for all of them to be resolved. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I guess it is going to become easier when we have the uh, automation process, mm -hmm. and then is this being worked on? No. Okay. Do you have work? Uh, do, uh, do you have time? <laughs> I mean, I I can probably do cool. either automation yeah. or <laughs> I mean, this is something I've wanted to do for a while. I, I can do automation or releases. So the you problem, choose. for example, was like 
we, we discussed this multiple times, but time is so limited for all these uh, files. So what you will also work with a lot of Stygian. Yeah. And, and like Michael, uh, uh, Michael is doing a lot of work there and uh, Richard Lau and me. Um, and the thing is with all the releases, you have to run Sigim often. Yeah. And then there is a lot of flakes in there and a lot of uh, PRs that you have to update. You have to resolve the conflicts. Why this module is breaking? Then you have to update the list. You have to update the code. Oh, it's a lot. <laughs> mm. Triage and Sitchim is a very big time save. Yeah, so um, it's just very, very time consuming. And we needed uh, to release more versions. So the time yeah. was invested into releasing new versions instead of automating things. Yeah. But if, if you miss something up during the release, you know right away, or there has been time that you released and it, a day passed, and then you realize that you made a mistake, and then you have, you to, have to release a new version. Okay, and that does that happen very often? So I just did recently, but it was like um, I mean that's happening. It, 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 it's the exception, not the rule, but yeah. it certainly yeah. happens. There we release there. something on a Tuesday, and then we realize, oh my gosh, we have to now release something so on with Friday. The day, uh, it turns out this has a uh, very strong. It, it, there are very different opinions about the days when to release something and when <laughs> yeah. not. Yeah. So, um, but the main problem about this is this all comes down to when the individual person has time. Yeah, right. And this could be I, I, and person I, and on the weekend. I think, and I think that should override all the concerns about oh, we don't want to do a release on a Friday, yeah. like yes. yeah. especially, that, yeah. especially, yeah. and 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 counterintuitively, perhaps that's especially true with security releases, where we want to get them out when we can get them out, and yeah. you know, like people, because like we, we 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 don't surprise people with them. We tell you know you know we post a week in advance. We're going to do a security you know, we're going to do a security release mm. on so, on or around such and such a day at such and such a, a time. Yeah, and you know. Sorry if it's on a Friday and you think they shouldn't be done on Fridays. Doesn't but matter. Like you know, we're we're yeah. telling you in advance, and you know. Yeah. Exactly. Anyway. We have. Um, and and then of course off. there's then of course there's Sam there's Sam's proposal to actually like have a regular cadence for security releases, which I think is a very very good idea because the release team can set aside time and the users can set aside time, and it'll be like Patch Tuesday. Everybody will know when it's coming a long 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 way in advance. So That's I guess great. a question I have is like I would love to do both of these. I Both of what? Time, uh, automation and releases. Okay. So, so, so you're putting the cart way in front of the horse. You're trying to figure out which one to do. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, no, I'm just saying I only have time for one. Yeah. yeah well, so. at, at the moment, I would say, like, no matter what, you yeah. should probably try to do some releases to yeah. even know what problems yeah. you're yeah. facing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then figure out what you're going to yeah. do, like, yeah. doing releases or yeah. automate. Okay. Or, cool. But, yeah, you're not, you're not going to be able to automate without actually doing the yeah. work, probably. Yeah. This would be my yeah, yeah. guess. That's been our issue. Like we we've got people like a few of us together who can do the releases, and then some people drop off, move on for whatever reason, and yeah. then we're left with all the releases to do. Mm -hmm. And then, as I mentioned, it took a good six six to nine months with Miles mentoring me yeah. to be able to do a release on my own. So, well. and and like I. Also, like just recently, I was angry about myself where I did a, a small mistake in in the notable changes. Uh, it was not uh, noticed early on, um, mm -hmm. and well, the notable changes is missing a name from Anna. <laughs> Well, because I changed in, uh, release notes in the meanwhile, mm -hmm. and I copied something wrong, and it was yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. It's just a lot of manual work. Yeah, and because of that, mistakes happen. I guess I'm the only one who noticed, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as far as process goes, you, you said that Miles has been onboarding you, Beth. Um, and so the way you envision um, helping newer people get familiar with it, did you mean that they would piggyback on the existing process or you were going to start your own meetings to? Uh, I'd probably start my own and then try and expand that from yeah. there. Or okay. any of us could. Um, what I've started doing is scheduling time at work when I'm allocated to work on backporting and things. Yeah. And I think Shelley does something similar and Miles does. And then we went for a phase of just opening the Zoom whenever we were doing it. Yeah. And people mm. could hop in and just shadow what we're doing and mm. we could talk through. Okay. People have time. Right, right. Yeah. Cool. Cool. I have a question. Probably I missed some earlier conversation, but what is the motivation behind 
uh, backporting everything in the upper branches to the LTS branches. Ideally, we should be looking at only the stable ones or the ones which are actually required by users. Yeah, I think it's um, conflicts going forwards. So if you backport everything, you're less likely to hit conflicts when something big comes in. Yeah, but then that works against the LTS philosophy. For example, in the, in the bleeding edge, we see something breaks. Quite often we see that. And we are actually inheriting all those breakages into the LTS. We do have time frames. So you're only supposed to pull things back once it's been in current for like X number of weeks. Yeah. Um, and there are some, it's kind of like a release of case by case basis. There are some PRs I know Miles and myself definitely looked at and we've seen people have posted issues on it and we haven't pulled that back. So it's not like a black and white, absolutely everything gets pulled back. There is some cherry picking of which mm -hmm. miners should go in. Yeah. But it, it's not clear. It's, I think our documentation states that on the best case, we will pull back what we can. Yeah. So is it possible to classify the features which are landing up uh, in the master in a way that this changes and the family of changes, what is happening over there is potentially backward porting candidate so yes. that you can actually uh, start back. back yeah, I think I, I'd prefer it that way myself if it was when you open this as an author, you're like, should this apply to 10 and eight? And if you added labels at that point, it would be easier for us because we would know what needs to come back yeah. and what wouldn't. That way you're, you're reducing your work a lot and uh, start backporting as soon as possible so that you don't face the problem of uh, complexities. So normally it's done in the other way around. So normally we uh, say by default, every commit would be backported. But if, you, if anyone uh, expresses concerns about it during in the PR or even later, they uh, add the don't land on version release line to it, where it should not land. And, and uh, that also uh, automatically, implicitly implies that all versions below that one yeah. will not, uh, um, should also not be taken into account. Mm. Normally we add every explicitly, but it is actually from the release team done implicitly for all versions below. Mm. <coughs> and um, so we have something like that. We also have a base for LTS, which means like at the moment, as you just said, like that um, there is a, at least, I think two weeks time frame. I think, it, yeah, two or three. Two or three, yeah. Um, and the, the PR has to be released already uh, on a different release line, mm -hmm. on the current one, um, before it may be backported at all to um, one of the um, LTS ones. And uh, I'm, I don't know, but was there any, in like, uh, did you hear any complaints or, or concerns? Because so far I've been, I'm not been aware that this has been a problem. Yeah, uh, there wasn't any complaint as such, but the way I look at it is LTS by default should not change at all. It should focus only on field reported issues and the issue is resolved in the latest branches, latest releases, you could backport it because it's already fixed and has some amount of uh, um, you know, test cases that's run on that and proven to be stable. Then you graduate it to the LTS. Yeah, so, I was kind of speaking to Sam Roberts about something similar saying, why do we put miners in LTS release lines for like nine to 10 months. Yeah. Because if you didn't, um, people would have an incentive to move up to the latest LTS to use the new features. There would be less work for us because we'd only have to backport yeah. fixes. Or I think we would still backport features if people raised cases for them, but those features would obviously conflict a lot more. Yeah, I don't have the numbers, but I see issues coming from the field, which are from the LTS. So uh, if you actually look at it in a systematic manner, we can see that some of these issues are coming from backporter issues, backporter PRs. Yeah. 
for example something which works on 10.15 breaks in 10.15 16 so definitely it come from backport yeah yeah, yeah. It, it could happen yeah yeah it's so then this could happen with a fix as well it could happen with a fix as well but yeah that's a classical regression but whereas in this case uh, it was a feature which was not intended to touch this area of code at all and uh, it sounds like a regression too. yeah it's all regression but you are not addressing the user's pain point as such you are not addressing a reported issue you are you know entering a feature you are fixing some other's problem but eventually causing some other use case to break we we don't I'm, seem I'm to be sure. like i think it would be a pretty dramatic change to yes. say we let we kind of be saying it goes straight into maintenance after current and therefore we'll only get like fixes to regressions bug fixes maybe i i we could maybe have some exceptions saying that some miners could land but we'd have far less yeah um i i guess it's an interesting point definitely and we could discuss it but then i guess it should be a bigger round because this sounds like a huge thing it changed like like about every release line we've had so far yeah so this, the whole so active would I, I would not even want not to decide this as a release group but more like all collaborators sure that. yeah <laughs> but it's a clear trade off between how much time you are spending on development effort i mean you reduce you you tend to do backport as much as possible to reduce the development effort but on the other side the, the side effect is going to the consumers the the one argument sam had when i mentioned this earlier was that um you want people to be able to try out new features on older release lines before they upgrade that would be a good idea yeah but if we don't backport some of the miners like any additional features they wouldn't have that opportunity to test something out while they're on no date that that's going to be more disruptive than uh my proposal i guess because right now everything happens in the master branch i can have an opinion which on this i mean i i No, no, I mean, I mean, I, I, I find the, I, I, I find, I certainly find the, the argument that, um, uh, not, you know, that, that, that by, by keeping the LTS branches as up to, as in sync as possible with master, it, it greatly simplifies, um, you know, the, 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 the maintenance of those branches in that, you know, new things land much more easily and there aren't, big impossible C++ heavy uh, backports that need to happen. On the other hand, I also understand the expectation, you know, the default expectation of an end user is when they, is when they have a branch that's marked LTS, and this is not a node thing, this is, you know, what LTS is to most people, is something that will, you know, that will be supported for a long time and, un and, 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 I mean, it's really, although, okay, so be support for a long time and undergo minimal changes and certainly no breaking changes, although we're not talking about making breaking changes to LTS. But then on the other hand, I do think that the main thing for most people is that it's supported for a long time, that, they, that they're never, that they're not going to have to endure breaking changes, but not, not, not necessarily that there won't be, you know, a lot of updates. So I don't know. So I mean, I mean, and ultimately, it is the release working group's decision. But I do also completely appreciate Ruben's comment that, like, this is not the type of decision I want just the release group to make. So, we could open an issue. I mean, any yeah, but I agree with the point so far that the, what so, I've been working with the companies well, when we're using LTS, we we want the support, not the new features. Yeah. We will look into that. That it, it's it would be supported for a longer term. That's what we care about. 
uh, not not the release cadence. No, like, it's, yeah. like, it's like it's okay. It's okay if there's a lot of little documentation updates yeah. and a yeah, lot yeah, of. You yeah. pick a release, and that's what happens, and that's what you stick with for a while, yeah. and then yeah. you eventually upgrade it upgrade. more. Yeah, it's not, but not what, uh, my experience when it comes to um, requests on the uh, repository. Mm -hmm. Actually, like most requests are not about the backdates, but about can you hey, please can add I this, have this feature? Um, yeah. feature. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, I mean the whole. L so so oh, God. I just on that. Is it from the same people? Or is it from a specific, no, no, so what I'm saying is, is it from different people asking for like individual features or is it uh, like one group asking for a new feature over and over and over? It's different persons. Yeah, yeah. so that, that, that doesn't exclude what, I, what I'm asserting. Cause like if someone wants one feature, they might get that and then they'll stick on that version and then they won't upgrade. Yeah. So if, if it was the same group coming multiple times, I would say, okay, that's an indicator that they want to consistently update. But if it's like people at randomly asking for for you know this feature or that feature, that's not necessarily a signal that they're like try all trying to update fast. Mm. Um, and like I mean, with my experience of both Microsoft and Node Source, like people stick, they they pick a version and that's where they stay and until so they up. Often, that's often problem. So so, so I agree. there's 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 another there's another thing that we haven't actually touched upon here, which is that there's not all there, there's actually like. Like we're talking about like current and then LTS, but there's actually two flavors of LTS, right? Like we like like for the first year LTS is active, active and then there's LTS maintenance. And we are working on the naming. At the that's it, that's sure, it, yeah. sure. I mean, na naming, <laughs> naming though. The point, the point, the point is that whatever they're named, you could make the case that the you know that that yeah, once it's in once it's in maintenance, once it's in its final year. We're not bad. We're we're not gonna bother. Like we're we're gonna release only when there's a security fix yep. or a critical bug. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're not touching it. In fact, that might already be that, what we did. That is pretty maintenance. much our statement. But yeah, and so and so, and so that would be consistent with what you're suggesting. But then the LTS active line could be something that is. I mean, yeah, I mean it's right there in the name, right? Active. It's not. You know, it's it's, it's getting more than just critical fixes and security. Maybe security, we, I think we even do for the versions which are not in the LTS. We only do it for the current release. Security releases is only current and LTS. Oh, yeah. So, so it's at most four branches because there's for a like, brief, there's a brief window where there's three LTS, where there's two maintenance LTS uh, branches and one active LTS branch. But usually it's it's yeah, usually it's three branches. Could a suggestion be that we extend the maintenance phase to be longer and reduce the active phase? Yes, maybe. I mean, um, I, what we could do yeah. is to have a survey about it, because I well, well, I mean, so, 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 there's a lot of inputs here, right? Like, there's what, what do end users and customers expect? There's what do the companies who support a lot of end users and customers, the the IBMs, the 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 near forms, the node sources, the Microsofts, what do they expect? And then there's what can we do that doesn't make the volunteer releasers completely miserable? Yep. Like you know, like yeah. and the, and these things and these things might be at odds. So I think a survey is a good idea, but I also think that like, you know, kind of like actually actively thinking about what if what if what we need and what our customers need are, are very different things. How do we resolve that? Because yeah. I suspect it's more likely that that's the case than that it's not the case. Well, because that's the other thing. Like, so what I really hear. Um, is pretty much the, the two extremes. I know you're more in the middle with your suggestion, but for me, I think the main thing that we could do as main as releasing work group is um, either we keep it at the moment that we backward everything after a specific time, and we try to actually get everything in there, like really everything. Um, we were just talking about it earlier. We started to backporting Zember majors yeah. in the Zember patch way, so we add a specific commit on top of the Zember major that makes the Zember patch to move the breaking changes. Um, and and uh, on the other hand, we could um, extend the maintenance phase of the LTS release, which is pretty much exactly that, that we only backport some fixes, uh, like uh, only um, patch commits and uh, security releases. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then it would mean, okay, we have to do less releases overall, which was less commits, so that's also okay. Um, but uh, I don't know. So What's here's good or bad. Here. Oh. I think I know what I would recommend if I were on the release working group, which I'm not. Mm -hmm. 
but I would I would say do do what you do do what you were planning on doing like you know backport everything not backport but land everything in the same order you know minus the breaking change parts and but like actively seek feedback like from people like pe pe people might think they will be bothered by something that when it actually happens they're not bothered and vice versa they might think they want something that when they actually get it it causes them problems um i mean it might not be a bad idea to pursue something you know pursue something you know message it let people know it's happening and sort of just see see what happens because you know because it's not like it's not like you can't decide to just stop doing that you can absolutely at any point just decide to stop doing it like how well do stopping you know from doing something though once it's already announced to people seems like there would be inertia and there would be pushback people don't like i mean they did what i'm first, trying to get at is people gone. don't like something being taken away second, though, but, they, but but I, the people who are taken away from this case is the release working group like you know i mean with release i thought i've not if, heard really any complaints yeah anyway, anyway, we should probably consolidate in one conversation go ahead go keep sorry. talking <laughs> the, the, the only thing I've really heard, is, the only thing that I've seen a vacuum for is security. Um, like people don't have signals for when a security release happens. It's very not straightforward. Like a bunch of individuals tweet it, and Node.js might retweet it, but yeah, like yeah, yeah. that's okay. that, that's the only thing. So that comes down so, to a different part because our communication with um, changes is not great. Like I yep. on last week, I've been on a conference in uh, Russia, and um, we had a. Okay. I got to go downstairs for five o'clock. But FYI, there's nothing starting here. About what would be um, good or bad, and a couple of things, <laughs> and it all came down to documentation and knowledge about changes. Yeah. Be like people did not know that something was in a specific release. Plan. They did not know that the feature was actually in no chance at all. I, I, I would and really like us to like maintain a list of what's in. And I think it exists somewhere, but it's like not something we use. Yeah. But so like maintain what's in each release. So we do have the change log, but it's something not consumable yeah. for people. Um, and um, I guess that comes a little bit in that direction. Uh, but it's not really about the release group in this case. Because the release group is mainly focusing on doing the release, but this is mainly about bringing knowledge and information to the user, and this is something we really have to improve. Makes sense. Yeah, I agree. I hundred percent. Question is how? <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough one, I guess. <laughs>